But although this particular weapon looks old, it is actually a brand new gun. I got nightmares in my head, I fear. Thoughts build up until I can't feel. My mind fills up into a creature, and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. I got nightmares in my head, I fear. Thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Hello and a warm welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. As you may be aware, I'm covering the two-week trial of Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, the armorer in the Rust incident, and after just two days... There have been a couple of shockers, including the one that you've just heard. Number one, that the gun was new. Well, you know what? The gun wasn't just new. It was brand new. I'm not sure how or where the impression was created that this prop was old and thus susceptible to malfunction. Any ideas? Interestingly, at a certain point in time, it was claimed that this gun was destroyed during evidence testing by the defense. Well, only for the state to say it wasn't. It may have been damaged during the FBI's testing, as noted in the FBI's July 2022 firearms testing report. In this analysis, which is essentially a review of the first two days of trial, the highlights, the most shocking, interesting and unexpected evidence and photos, we're going to go through the other five. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you find this analysis worthwhile, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. So number two, Hannah had a live round in her lap. So you might say, how did a live round get onto set? And is there any mystery surrounding Hannah's link in this chain? Well, there's actually a photograph that seems to show Hannah with a live round literally in her lap or sort of near her lap. There was one occasion where a live round was sitting right on Ms. Gutierrez's lap and she failed to identify it. This image is one of several that seems to tell the thousand-word story that Hannah wasn't exercising the due diligence her role demanded. Interestingly, when Hannah was offered the role in a previous job, she was very explicit in saying she wasn't sure if she was ready and she actually went on a podcast a month before she began work on the Rust set and a, about a month before the Rust incident where she said she wasn't sure if she was ready for that role, in other words, the previous role. And so I think where we are right now with Hannah on trial for involuntary manslaughter, a woman has died, the director also injured, I think that answers that question. Was she ready? Was she the right person for the job? Number three, Sarah Zachary threw away evidence. It may be that the secondary charge, which has to do with evidence tampering, note it's not evidence tampering with rounds. It's the allegation that she passed on a baggie, perhaps with cocaine on it, to a co-worker. And it's possible that that evidence was flushed down the toilet, literally, by Hannah's arch nemesis, Sarah Zachary, the props master, and Hannah's young boss. Incidentally, they were both 24 years old at the time. Now, although it's easy to believe drugs, alcohol, and marijuana are relevant in this case, it's not going to be easy to prove without a toxicology test. And guess what? There isn't one. Number four, messiness of the prop supplier and prop truck. Now, some of you may have been surprised by this if you have never seen or never read anything about this case, it might be quite surprising to see the sloth, the clutter, the, the very messiness from the prop supplier and prop truck. And you might say, so what if things aren't organized? Well, this is a situation where ammunition is being stored and ammunition that is being supplied to a film set where there really needs to be a duty of care to send blanks and to send dummy rounds and not to confuse the real thing live rounds with these things and so obviously this is a recipe for disaster this disorganized setting not only from the supplier but on the other end in the prop truck on the set 
And if you think about it, if the ammunition was simply organized and stored neatly, if you simply began the if the armorer simply began her job in this way, simply by being organized, simply by storing what she was storing neatly, that alone could have prevented any live rounds, let alone several, from making their way through the set and ultimately into the fatal firearm. The prosecutor is quite right in saying on the day that this incident happened wasn't the only day that mistakes were made. It was a pattern. Number five, lots of behind-the-scenes video. Although we haven't yet seen the video, it seems as though there is plenty of video documenting what was taking place behind the scenes on the Rust movie set. The prosecution expressed interest in 17 files of a total 126, and these were filmed on October 13th, eight days prior to the incident. The defense may refer to their own files as well. Those specific 17 videos, what day did you film those videos? That was uh, October 13th. Curiously, though, for a feature that was meant to sell Baldwin's dreamboat, a lot of this was about him, his idea, his project, he doesn't seem to feature in any of this footage unless the prosecution are exercising their prerogative of saving it, saving other footage for the big kahunas trial. I guess time will tell. Number six, Hannah's fate is tied to Baldwin's. Now, in terms of the live round that killed Hutchins, Prosecutors faulted Gutierrez Reed for not thoroughly checking each cartridge that she loaded into Alec Baldwin's revolver on the 21st. Now, despite what you may hear, it is the actor's job on a film set, almost as much as the armorer's, to check that a firearm is safe. Hannah failed to adequately do these checks, but Baldwin didn't seem to do them at all either. I think the biggest piece of evidence on the prosecution side is Hannah's acknowledgement that she should have checked properly and basically saying that she didn't check properly and that she should have made sure. And what she needed to have done was test each round individually to make sure it wasn't a live bullet. And it seems like from her own admission, when she was interrogated, she said that she didn't do that. So, I don't know if you notice the commonality between these, that we suspect them to be live. Um, the silver? Okay. Alright. That didn't st stick out to you when you loaded that gun? No. Is there live ammo that's kept on set? No. Never. I'm not going to take it further than that. Please join me on Monday for day three of this really interesting trial. Thank you for listening. Have a good weekend. Good, have a good rest of your weekend. And I'll see you guys next time.